Okay, in this short video, we're going to have a look at Tai Chi internal strength training, what it is, and why it might be of benefit to you, whether you're a Tai Chi practitioner or if you're just somebody who's interested in a really interesting and unique way um, of achieving high levels of fitness and health and all around well being. So, the first thing to know is that Tai Chi internal strength was originally the first thing that a student would learn when they started their Tai Chi training. Over the years, for various reasons, um, it became more secretive, and then it was only taught to very serious disciples, trusted disciples, um, in, in very small groups. This was up until quite recently. So this system of internal strength that I'm discussing is the Tai Chi internal strength system, or Tai Chi Nei Gong, as taught by Sifu Cheng Tin Hong of Hong Kong. Now, it's a really powerful system, and um, the fact is that two of the very best fighting uh, martial artists of, of the Chinese systems, uh, Cheng Tin Hong and Chang Dun Sheng, the uh, flying butterfly, I think he was called, from Taiwan, um, who was a primarily a Shui Zhou wrestler, but also a Tai Chi practitioner, who crossed paths with Wu Jian Chuan. Both of these gentlemen were lifelong practitioners of Nei Gong, although Cheng Dun Sheng called his system Iron Shirt Qi Gong which there are some other people that practice some, some of the exercises and they also call their system Iron Shirt Qigong. So Tai Chi Nei Gong, in, as presented here, is that of Sifu Cheng Tin Hong. Now Sifu Cheng Tin Hong was unique in the Tai Chi world because he was proven uh, as a fighter in both competition. He was known as Hong Kong's sort of top competition fighter in the 50s um, when he defeated the uh, three-time champion of Taiwan but he was also well known as being able to defend himself very well uh, on the rather rough streets of Hong Kong at the time. So Cheng Tin Hong himself was a bona fide fighter who'd learned from his uncle, who in turn had learned from Wu Jianchuan, the head of the Wu style Tai Chi at that time. But Cheng Tin Hong had another teacher called Qi Min Xuan, um, who came from a, another li lineage that kind of hopped over the line to uh, I believe Wu Jianchuan's father, Kuan Yu. So, anyway, Cheng Tong, extremely well trained, extremely tough, and he went on to train a lot of other very successful full contact fighters um, in kind of the heyday of the San Xiao movement uh, from the 50s through to the 80s, okay, culminating with my original teacher, Dan Doherty, who was the 1980 Southeast Asian martial arts champion, and from whom I learned the Tai Chi Nei Gong uh, sometime around when I was 15 years of age. So what was remarkable to me uh, after I learned the internal strength exercises was that immediately it had improved some of my Tai Chi practical skills. So people that I couldn't beat in pushing hands, all of a sudden they weren't so tough anymore. Um, it kind of built a type of strength and uh, power that was just really strangely useful for that type of activity, pushing hands, wrestling and so on. Okay, so let's get into sort of a little bit of background where the Nagon came from originally. So as mentioned, our system, it comes from uh, Cheng Tin Hong via Dan Doherty initially and then to my generation. But before Cheng Tin Hong, he was taught by his uncle, um, Cheng Wing Kuang, who was in turn taught by Wu Jian Chuan. Again, he also learned from this other master, Qi Min Chuan, who had a slightly different lineage. Okay, so apparently before that, the Neigong exercises came from Taoist monks, and some say originally Chang San Feng himself, the legendary founder of Tai Chi. Um, although these are, of course, unverifi un unverifiable facts, things like Chang San Feng and so on. But in our system and others, there's a, an old tradition that states that Chang San Feng was the founder. And it's just an unknown. We, we will just never know. But um, anyway, these exercises reputedly came from uh, monks, Taoist monks, who basically spent a lot of time studying nature, studying animals, studying the ebbs and flows of the universe, yin and yang, the seasons, and, the, and just the general cycles of nature. And in regards to the, the development of these types of exercises, they particularly studied the animals that lived the longest, so uh, tortoises, cranes, and deer. And based upon what they saw, they started to sort of piece together 
what were the key factors that enabled these animals to live so long. So that was their thinking, and then they set about designing a system of exercises to basically enhance human health and well-being. Now, somewhere along the line, these types of uh, systems to make the body extremely strong uh, and healthy were kind of combined with things that were also going to develop extremely useful martial arts skills. So Tai Chi Nei Gong was uh, like an amalgamation of both technical training, uh, physical strength and conditioning, and other health promotion uh, practices. So the, the primary function is to make the body very healthy. So this begins with the health of the internal organs. Uh, so in Tai Chi Nei Gong, there's an emphasis on developing dr breathing patterns that uh, are deep, so that you're that what's it's known as um, sinking the chi to the dan qian. So there's certain specific exercises that restrict, in a natural way, the movement of the upper body or the the rib cage and so on, so that the diaphragm has to move downwards towards this uh, mystical point known as the dan qian, which is just below the navel. So as your diaphragm moves downwards, it has the effect of not only bringing in a greater volume of oxygen but it also helps to massage all the uh, the intestines and also the internal organs okay so for the Taoists the functioning of uh, the, the high level functioning of your internal organs is a prerequisite to having good overall health okay so that's the first thing is the strengthening of the internal organs as well as the strengthening of lung function and the other thing is the the exercises by their nature there's a lot of different movement patterns and the I one of the ideas apparently is that your lungs learn to function and move around and stretch to fit the shapes of all the different movements that you're performing so that it's harmonious so this is known as inner and outer in unity okay so the second stage uh, that they try to build uh, using the Neigong is the functional strength of the whole body in a general way. So within a Nei Gong, there are certain postures, uh, standing meditation postures, if you like. Uh, some people might know them, know them as uh, Chen Zhuang, or so yeah, standing Qigong, standing like a tree, for example. Um, that's some a phrase that some people use. So these types of positions are held for you know, just a few minutes to up to you know, more than 10 minutes, some of them, uh, once you reach an advanced level in the Nei Gong practice, because there are different levels that you can go up in whereby you do more repetitions or you hold the postures for longer and longer. So as you start to increase your stamina and so on, you find that you develop a type of strength that is extremely um, tensile and elastic. So some people say it's to do with the fascia being trained, um, which is kind of a connective tissue that covers your, your muscles and also your internal organs and helps to keep your organs in in their ideal place within their cavities but it certainly is said to cover the muscle bellies and by training these certain elongated movements that you find within the Neigong for very specific shapes you'll find that there's um there's like a stimulation to the uh, to the body to produce uh, tougher and stronger fascia which is a kind of a, a, an elastic um, propertied thing so the strength you develop is very resilient like kind of like a, a rubber band that's been stretched okay, so it's really springy so you find that your movements become much more explosive and additionally because of the postures are held for a long period of time people believe that um, that helps to strengthen tendons and ligaments that don't have a great blood supply so in physiotherapy I believe that they try to strengthen these types of tissues using high repetition uh, schemes so the internal strength exercises they help to make the muscles uh, looser, softer, more flexible, um, but also they help to increase this uh, real elastic property uh, within the body and within the strength of the body. Now there's another thing uh, that happens, so there's quite a few, I can't remember off the top of my head how many different postures are static, um, but there's quite a few and they're in all different types of positions that are extremely martially relevant. So what also happens is not only do you build up the um, strength of the connective tissues as well as the muscles and the muscle endurance and so on, but you also build up a kind of like a, a neural memory of those positions. So it's really, really easy for your body to access those positions and to maintain them 
with minimal uh, neural activity. So you kind of achieve a, a like it's, it's like a posture, just, just holding yourself upright, except you can do it in a lot of different martially useful positions. So it makes your strength really efficient and your ability to hold extremely strong structures um, effortless. So these strong structures, they basically help you to absorb power from an opponent as well as to give much more power when you're issuing your own techniques. So that's kind of like how it builds general strength. The other thing is all the movements um, are done using the Tai Chi concept of working them from the ground up. So your power is always being generated from the feet through the legs and amplified by the movement of the waist. So it builds a lot of waist flexibility and torsion type of power, talking power. Um, again, to emphasize that all the power comes from the legs, yeah, and with perfect foot rooting so that you kind of don't leak any power anywhere. So this helps to start build your general athleticism um, and, and general strength and general power generating capacity. Okay, now in Tai Chi, there's eight ways of traditionally using force. So these are like the, the fundamental building blocks of your techniques. Um, so they analyze the different directions and the different ways that the body opens and closes. And then they design, you know, eight things that you can focus on um, known as the eight Jin or eight powers. So they're like the, the building block or the alphabet of your force generating uh, capacity in Tai Chi. Now the Tai Chi internal strength exercises work these forces very very specifically so you build up not only a general type of strength and power but also a highly specific type of strength and power um, that's highly highly refined yeah and that's going to directly be useful for your tai chi applications and the applications of your various tai chi techniques at the same time you're building up the an incredible level of uh, strength and power in the lower body um, through some very deep stance work in a wide variety of different stances um, and yeah so your your overall strength and power just goes through the roof and your Tai Chi specific strength and power um, is infinitely refined okay now this is combined as well with um, the development of uh, really good uh, center of gravity control so you can maintain a really good root and uh, low center of gravity so the other thing that Neigong is really, really useful for is um, concentration, yeah, awareness, concentration, and focus. So in the modern era, with uh, all these types of uh, technological advancements, um, there are some challenges uh, that we face, which is the diminishing attention span that we all seem to be getting. So Tai Chi internal strength is maybe an hour each day if you're doing it seriously or 20 minutes or whatever it is. Uh, it's a period each day where you're completely connecting with your own body away from any distractions and you're achieving a very, very meditative state and just f focusing on uh, posture, breath, alignment and so on. So you start to get uh, control back over your attentional focus and there's a, a whole host of associated benefits apparently with that type of thing. Um, yeah, I've certainly personally found it very beneficial and I think a lot of my students have um, but yeah by training in this way this really quiet meditative mindful way um, away from distractions you know you, you've got a systematic way of uh, developing deep deep relaxation so in Chinese Tai Chi circles they might call this being Sung uh, which I believe translates to letting go so the ability to just completely rest mind and body and just work your exercises. So um, achieving high levels of softness, relaxation, and mental focus is also one of the goals. In fact, um, the, the first stage as mentioned is mind and body in unity in the Nagon practice. So that's where your lungs and your breathing work perfectly harmoniously with the, um, the movements that you're doing. The second is uh, mind and body in harmony. So that's where basically your mind can be aware of all aspects of your movement. So you've got really good body awareness and postural awareness 
and you can create a perfect connection between your mind and body so that any kind of movement that you want to perform you can do it immediately so generally it's super useful i believe there's uh, health benefits from doing that but uh, martially it's extremely useful to be able to just create any shape any movement you want immediately because your uh, mind and body connection is so enhanced and apparently the third level is um, heaven and man in unity which is something to do with where you're just completely connected to uh, you know greater universal uh, phenomena and every action that you perform is directly I is the optimal action based upon the uh, needs of the situation which is kind of an egoless state probably most similar to the Taoist concept of Wu Wei or effortless action or the modern uh, psychological phenomenon of uh, flow states yeah, which I recommend a great book called Rise of the Superman for those that are interested in flow states as researched relevant to physical performance and uh, the increases that you can experience by being able to achieve flow states more readily which I believe is one of the benefits that uh, more serious snaking training is trying to develop and remember there's three levels of practice you know in terms of repetition scheme uh, according to the Cheng Tin Hong system and each time you go up a level you significantly increase the times you spend holding the postures and also the uh, repetitions that you uh, practice this the various exercises at so yeah that's a broad overview of uh, the basic benefits of Tai Chi Mei Gong um, for me it's, it's a transformative practice you know you can do it daily uh, uh, three times a week probably is a minimum if you want to get good benefits but if you want to achieve a high level of ability in um, Tai Chi I personally think it's essential um, specifically if you come from a certain type of lineage where there's certain types of movements that you're after um, but yeah, I think for a traditional Tai Chi stylist, it's quite transformative for your practice. Um, and it's uh, an excellent way to exercise. You can do it anywhere. It's perfect when done in nature. Um, and again, it's extremely relaxing and can help reduce all types of stress and anxiety, I believe. Um, apparently, Cheng Tin Hong uh, advised a lot of people to practice mainly the yin exercises if they were like, recovering from a nervous breakdown or particularly stressed out or couldn't sleep you know had insomnia and so on so the yin exercises were uh, known to be extremely beneficial for those types of people the yang exercises are quite tough demanding or extremely tough demanding and build a lot of physical strength and power uh, so they have a slightly different function but the final exercise of the tai chi ne gong is known as the old man burning the cinnabar and this is an exercise designed to uh, it's probably heavily influenced by internal alchemy as probably is the whole of the Neigong the sort of Taoist internal alchemy uh, training ideology and you do it at the end of a heavy Neigong session or in fact at any other time and it's pure breath work uh, breath awareness sort of meditation and then uh, you know seated meditation and this type of training can uh, be amazing for recovering from hard sessions uh, hard training um, or to just put your mind and body in a real state of tranquility uh, at, at any time of the day so it's also done before sleep and ha really helps to enhance the quality of sleep so that's the very final yang exercise which kind of rounds out the system so the 23 exercises uh, pure physical exercises although they have that kind of like meditative um, kind of uh, approach that you use to doing them and the final exercises are pure meditation featuring two breathwork sets and a final seated meditation so it's an incredibly well balanced training system that you can do on a daily basis and I'm not sure if I mentioned there are 12 exercises in two sets so you have the yin set and the yang set 12 exercises in each set and the traditional idea is that you do the yin exercises Mondays Wednesdays Fridays and Sundays 
and the Yang sets Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. So you do the Yang set three times a week. That's the tough, dynamic tension, physically demanding um, set, and then the slightly less physically demanding set, although it has hardier, harder uh, cardiorespiratory demands, actually, um, you do that four days a week. So seven days a week for a very serious practitioner, um, you've got the perfect method of exercise that builds physical conditioning, mental qualities, uh, really, really useful, as well as enhancing um, technique and power generation. So it's it's an amazingly time efficient uh, training program. So um, yeah, that's a, a, a general overview of Neigong, Tai Chi Neigong, the 24 yin yang system. Um, if you're interested in this, you can uh, learn the Neigong now via an online course that I have available at my website, which is www.neilrosiak.com. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. And if you like this type of concept uh, content, please like, subscribe, and uh, even ring that little bell thing.